All right, big deal. Uh, everybody was all excited that they uh, they brought Noah Brown in, right? Traded John Ridgeway, opened up a spot, signed Noah Brown. Uh, Vet's been around for a while. He's had some moments. Certainly had some big games last year, Cakes. Uh, he did. And a lot of people were making a big deal about the fact that Jaden Daniels and he were staying after practice to work on their game. I, I, you know, their connection. I didn't, you know, I, a lot of people were just so excited that Jaden was working with this guy after practice. I just think that's who he is, man. I'm not surprised that's, at all. That's what his character is. Yeah. Like, he's got a new wide receiver in the room. He wants to get familiar with him before the season starts. Puts in the extra work. You'd love hmm. to see that from a young player. It's great. According to Coach Quinn, it was uh, Jaden's idea mm -hmm. to work with Brown after practice. And so they could try to get on that same page, uh, you know, before week one, which is coming up. It's around the corner. So it's a great Good. sign, but I don't think anybody should be surprised. This guy, Jaden, <laughs> is like passing every test. Uh, just absolutely love this guy and his work ethic. Uh, can't wait until the real bullets start flying here, Cakes. So only what? How many days away are we from uh, opening day? Nine. Nine. Of the commanders? Right? Yeah, for the commanders? Yeah, 4 p.m. on yeah, Sunday, next, right? Yeah. Six for the Sunday. NFL. Six I think it's, for the NFL. It's either 4 or 425. I'm not sure the exact time. Yeah, I think it's 425. I'll look it up. My daughter has a noon game at the Naval Academy on Sunday. Okay. It'll but be, it'll be it done back. by 2, right? I would think by 2. Oh, two, yeah, you're good. I, th I think I'll You're be good. See, you usually complain about the 4 o'clock four kicks. That's but that's the one I like. Yeah, that's right. Um, the, the, the press gaggle, were you able to get that audio, Valdez? Uh, we're in front of 425 uh, kick. That's perfect for yep. me. There you uh, have it. Noah Brown yesterday in front of his locker, including our buddy JP Finley. I'm stealing this audio from JP's Twitter account. Um, so here you go. Here's Noah Brown, kind of our introduction to him. I assume you had a couple of options um, after uh, you moved on from Houston. Why did you decide this was a good play? Um, kind of like I mentioned before, I'm familiar with some faces in the building. Um, faces are familiar with me. They know what I'm about, know what I can bring to this team. And I'm, I feel like it's a good opportunity for me to uh, go help the program, and I'm excited to be here. So what do you feel you do bring? I, I think I bring a little bit of everything when it comes to the offensive uh, mindset. You know, I, I'm, I'm a very viable uh, pass option. I can, I can block in a, in a blocking game, have experience in a uh, special teams game, and I'm willing to do all of it. So, um, you know, I'm just ready to contribute. What was it like getting that work in with Jaden, and what do you think of the rookie quarterback quickly? Uh, it was great. You know, today was my first day out there. You know, I've heard nothing but great things about him. And, you know, today felt nothing short of that. You know, I'm impressed with how he operates, uh, how he takes control of things. And uh, wanted to get some extra work in, so we got that done. And excited to get on the right track. Jason, I'm going to test you here. Noah Brown from where? You're an expert on where people are from. Um, well, I know he went to Ohio State. You have a read on him. Like I'm just going to say, I'm, I'm going to mm -hmm. say he's from Georgia. Incorrect. He is from Flanders, New Jersey. Oh, oh there you go. Northeastern Would, guy. Wouldn't have guessed that. Valdez will probably be playing golf in New Jersey next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I hear he's in a different state playing golf, good for him. All right, we have some audio also. I just love to play these audio clips of uh, Adam Peters. Okay, mm -hmm. He's got a bunch of uh, clips here. We don't have to go through all of them, obviously, but some of the more interesting ones. Let's is this from the Grand Danny show? Yeah, I think so. This is uh, the first clip when asked how you balance rebuilding versus winning. Yeah, I mean, I think you could do them both at the same time. Um, so it's not so much a tug of war. It's just, but it is a, it is a balance. And um, make no mistake about it. I, I've said this, and I'm probably repeat myself a few times. Uh, it's not a rebuild. It's a recalibration, and, and we are trying to win right now. And, and we're, we are, you know, we do have goals to be to be really good this season. Um, but it is it is my job as a general manager and really in conjunction with DQ and we make every decision together is to, to be good now and, and to build for a sustainable team for the future to a team that you guys will see can compete for championships every year. That's great. I, I just don't understand the reluctance. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Kind of talking in circles, but it's okay. Like, GMs don't want to say rebuild. Yeah, so yeah. stupid. Because Rizzo never rebuild, liked it. You just you just fired thirty people. <laughs> yeah. You like you know what I mean? You got thirty new players on the team. It's a freaking rebuild. Who cares? Highly yeah. successful guys like him. He doesn't. They don't, they don't like want to say the rebuild that. tag. I, it's very I weird. Like dumb. It. He's that's the way he's they talking operate. out of both sides of his mouth. I feel like. Yeah. I mean, like you, if you lose, oh, don't worry, we're rebuilding. 
It's part of the rebuilding process. Yeah. And then if you win, it goes, yeah, but we're trying to win right now. Right. We're trying to make the playoffs. We're trying to make a run. Yeah. Doesn't I, make doesn't make sense to me. Was that what Rizzo said? Rizzo wouldn't like rebuild. Yeah, all these guys. I, I think forget, it's because. I don't know if he said recalibrate. He was using a different term a, a couple seasons ago. Too. He it's like said reload, maybe. I think yeah. he did reload. I think it was reload. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, reload is the. <laughs> I th- I know what the the, the buzzword. I I think I know what they the get. They don't want fans to think, oh, I don't have to pay attention to them because right. they're gonna be awful. Right. So yeah. we're not That's gonna exactly say rebuild. Why. We're gonna say recalibrate, and we're still gonna be competitive. But you know, we're not stupid. Fans can see you just freaking turned over seventy percent of the roster. Uh, but. You know, right. it's a dumb little thing, but it is kind of he annoying. He can label it however yeah, he wants. We know we know what's going on this here. Is a re- you took a, a nuclear bomb. And it's okay. <laughs> you have, when, when you win four games, you have to rebuild it. That's that's your job. Everyone yeah. knows that. I know. Everyone well, knows just it. accept it. Why, we're just playing word games. The whole world is word games. I mean, that's what these guys do. I mean, well, talk to the maybe, media a billion times. Well, maybe everyone, he's telling people that because everybody got over their skis because Comparing them to the Texans, mm-hmm. thinking that they're gonna make a yeah, playoff run. Yeah, but then run. you would say rebuild, right? Recalibration makes it seem like yeah, it's just a little tweak here, and we're gonna be off and running. Are you kidding? It's just a different word. Now listen, I do think they could go on a run if the quarterback gets hot, but who knows what the hell's gonna happen? No idea. Scared to death, our corners are gonna get torched. Um, all right, here you go, number three uh, over here from Grand Dan. Great interview these guys did. Um, how do you view success this year? This is Adam Peters. Yeah, I think uh, you, you, you do get into trouble looking too far down the road. And, and so, um, again, you know, you're know, probably going to get a, a radio show full of cliches here. But <laughs> we're really, uh, I mean, every single day we're trying to get better. And I think that's how we look at it. And if we got better today, we had a really good day of practice today. Um, guys looked really good. The guys were into it before we have a, a three-day break, before we get back and start working for Tampa. So um, we went out and got a lot better today, I thought. And, and that's the outlook you have each day, each week. You're getting better and you're stacking you're stacking up days. And then um, if you do that and you get better each day, you're going to like what it looks like at the end of the year. I mean, Commander's fans should be overjoyed at Adam Peters being here. Mm-hmm. He's the most sought-after personnel guy on the market. He's here. And more importantly, he's not Ron Rivera <laughs> picking the players going forward. For this team. No, he seems he be like thrilled. so far, uh, and even though I get annoyed that he's not using the term rebuild, seems like a great guy. Yes. You know, seems like very, very thoughtful, very capable, hand. measured. Yeah. It's great. But just speaking of Ron Rivera, he got another gig with the NFL Network. I believe he's going to be on every Wednesday. <laughs> I saw. And now he's going to be part of their Sunday coverage. Yeah. Okay. Is he going to fold do. his arms on set? I won't watch him for one <laughs> millisecond. Yeah, because I know that anything that comes out of his mouth is gone. I feel like he's got the fo- football acumen of Kevin. <laughs> Honestly, he stinks. He stinks. I saw him light <laughs> fire to this roster. You think I'm gonna listen to him talk about upcoming games and break down you know, personnel? Somebody, somebody no, told thank me. Have you ever killing Ron? I actually like the guy. He's a, he's nice, a very nice person. I know. You know? I like he the was guy. just. Really bad he as should, both a coach and a personnel guy. He should own. I would agree. You know what he should do? Guys, he should, guys, guys, He guys, should own guys, like guys, a bar. Guys, you, know, it'd be like, you know, he should be like a host at a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, use his personality. You know, nice, charming person. Sling some drinks. He should not be He's coaching football. He's such a dinosaur, he has a cigarette machine at his bar. <laughs> <laughs> somebody told me. It's not one of you guys, I don't think. But it's somebody that said, I uh, can't remember who it was. He said, you know, the 85 Bears, you know, and mm-hmm. Ron was part of the – the part of their – one guy that followed that team or said, said they were the number one defense because we were number one and we had Ron Rivera. Like he, like he was the weak link on the defense. Right. <laughs> I, 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 I don't go into any conversation. Not prepared. We were the number one defense and we and we had Ron Rivera. Right, we had that anchor on our defense. Really, We're just killing him. That's so stupid. <laughs> We're just killing them. No, I can't remember who it was. It was somebody that, that covers football or something that was telling me that story. And then they were they okay, were he wasn't out. Richard Dent. He yeah, wasn't right. the fridge, but he was on the team. Terry. He was right. an NFL yeah, player. Exactly. You can exactly. Play. He was a bum on the on the best defense. <laughs> <You hate him. laughs> and, and, and somebody pointed this out that when he was his riding coattails, he's a passenger. Yes. When he was when he was the top dog, when he had his big years in Carolina, I can't. It was obviously Cam was big, right? And then the offensive coordinator, I think it was the was it the guy from uh, Buffalo, 
Is he the offensive coordinator for him? His defensive coordinator. McDermott. Was, McDermott. Yeah, McDermott may have been the defensive, defensive coordinator. Yeah, McDermott. Who was his offensive coordinator? His OC another, in Carolina. Look it up. But it's like when those coaches left, <laughs> right, the toilet. <laughs> in other words, his whole life is a fraud. He's a guy's a fraud. <laughs> He's, but he's not attacking him he as a person. He was in the NFL. <laughs> not at all. He's and only then attacking he became his... a defensive coordinator. I mean, he worked his way his up to become skills. a head coach to defend him a little bit. Right. Believe me, he's mediocre as a, right. as a head coach. When you come I'm over here and hatred. you yeah. nuke my team the way he did, I I, 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 I mean, if, he, he, if, he, if, he the commanders, if the commanders win 10 games this year, yeah. are you going to discredit Dan Quinn because he hired Cliff Kingsbury? Am I going to? You're kind of get you're discrediting Ron Rivera because you're saying he had a really good offensive coordinator. Right? So what are you saying? Why are you knocking him for having a really good offensive coordinator? Well, I'm just saying, well, no. His success was when he had that offensive coordinator. When he lost him, and he lost – actually, it's the defensive guy that they were talking about. When they lost McDermott, I think they went in the toilet, too. Okay. I think. Norv was an offensive coordinator for the Panthers. he was supposed to be the defensive guy. Yeah, but Luke Keekley got hurt. They the, had a lot of issues. There's probably a sure. bunch Norman of left. issues, yeah. Well, it's just not that cut and dry. Norman wasn't you, that good. He wasn't he Carolina. Okay, we came here. He was butt. Yeah, but right he, after Carolina, in, like in he 20, came straight here. But he was good at one point. He was a he was a good zone corner. You know what that means? Cakes could do it. <laughs> right. Why, Joey? Why right. I think Ron Shrapnel. Uh, Ron, by the way, in 2013 with the Panthers, his OC was Mike Shula. No, they it wasn't were, the they OC then. I, I, I'm, I'm cultivating. It, it, it was they were talking about how his defense was great ah, under McDermott. So. Gotcha. McDermott left. Okay. I wish I could remember who was telling me that. But anyway, um, anything to pile on Ron, I'm all about. <laughs> he also had Rob Chudzinski as his OC there. Chud. And he had Norv. And he had Norv. That's right. He 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 has no talent. <laughs> like no discernible talent. He's a he's a media guy. He's a talker. He There's should have been of, you realize... he should have been a bartender. He's not that good. <laughs> you realize a bunch of head fashions? coaches have <laughs> offensive coordinators fashion. and yeah. defensive coordinators. I'm just saying he doesn't even have defensive chops. Like he He was a defensive coordinator? <laughs> yeah. Okay, whatever. Probably had great players if he ever had any oh, success. So right. he gets discredited for side, having he's good just players. Wrong about all of it. So it's, it's fine. <laughs> guy, the guy had some good years. He put a, put together pretty good staffs. We should all fade. He, he went to a Super Bowl. Staff we, here was brutal. Worst staff to the, in, in here was. Speaking of the staff, we should all fade Wisconsin this year. Because Jack Del Rio is a special advisor to their head coach. Yeah, that's just a fade the Badgers. That's just a fade paid gig to do nothing. He's a consultant. I mean, yeah, he's a consultant. Yeah, you're gonna sit up there in a box and and, uh, and just pound get Miller lights. Yeah, yes. sure, but <laughs> it, Fake he, his stink is now on the Wisconsin program. <laughs> uh, I agree with that. His stench. He's bringing that don't to ever, Madison. Don't ever scorn Eric. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, I don't think we hated his staff by the end, but I don't think when Ron took over. We killed his staff. He had Jack Del Rio on the staff. Yeah, he we learned. Up. Okay. Do you learn? I learned. <laughs> but they didn't have – it was the talent. It wasn't necessarily yes. the staff it, as much it, as dude, the talent. Dude, the oh, most truthful thing he ever I said. Well, towards both. the end it was. The, the, the I most, know the quarterback. It's the it quarterback. Was That's what it, it was. was Could anybody have the won with the quarterbacks he, he had? He was completely at fault with I'm that. agreeing he with you there. It was his fault. But in terms of the coaching, could anybody have won with the with the no. array of quarterbacks was, that they had? He was responsible they would have won more games than Ron. In. Yes. Maybe a couple. 100%. couple. 100%. They had the worst defense in the NFL, JP. That too. Last season. Yeah. They were, they they were, were bad. Look, I don't want to be in the business Rio, of defending Ron, but he was not complete. He's, Del Rio's defenses way, weren't Dan always Quinn's bad. Dan Quinn's resume right, right now is eerily similar to Ron Rivera's when he became the head coach of Dan the Commanders. Dan Quinn is, so, is just – I can already tell is a better leader than Ron. I can already tell. All we the, ever heard about Ron coming in is leader of men. Yeah. yeah. All, everything Your about him is – Everything is fake. Hey, do you want, you want a Ron story? Sure. Yes. Uh, I, I think this was the Dolphins game. They're getting smacked. At halftime, it was like, oh, yeah. well, it wasn't like twenty-eight nothing. Tyree Kill went, went yeah. nuke on them, and so and so the players are in the locker room. They're all pissed off, and you know they're trying to rally. And Ron comes in to the locker room, and he uh, addresses everyone. And he says, "Guys, for the second half, let's go out there and have fun." Guys, 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 guys. <laughs> that was his message. That was his. That was his <laughs> halftime speech. Just, go, well, didn't he go, also do hilarious. the halftime no talk one time? <laughs> Yeah, yes. he's the. Uh, I, I can't he, remember which game dude, that was. He told the Bears game. The Bears game. It was game. maddening, dude. I'm <laughs> telling you. He's 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 he's
Yeah. He told us. He told his players to go have fun. Yeah. <laughs> As a, yeah, go you got to make a, no, guy, no adjustments, no yeah, accountability. Kill, streak down the sideline. Have yeah. fun with that. He's yeah. an empty <laughs> vessel. He's he tell, charming, he, and that's it. Let's go out there and have fun. It's like they're 12 year olds. <laughs> He's a charming guy. Jason likes him. Jason Bishop likes him. Eric As a Bickle, guy, I like him. Eric yes. Bickle thinks he is brutal. You know, I'm going to watch him I didn't just say, for I didn't entertainment think he was, purposes. Hold on. I didn't say I didn't think he was brutal as a coach and as a, yeah. as a personnel guy. He was. Yeah. But as a as a guy, as a person, yeah, I do like. Him. Sure, but you don't. You can say you do, but you no, don't. No, I don't care. <laughs> no, you don't. I just don't care. All you you actually listen, care. All you gotta you, do is listen how you talk if about. If you him. didn't care, you'd be ambivalent. You get passionate. <laughs> well, because you, you hate him because he was so bad. Everything was fake. The only about guy him. you maybe hate more is Eric the enemy. The enemy was <laughs> because people just aren't being honest. People were trying to act like the enemy was some sort of godsend to offense. <laughs> 